So after a freak staging accident has stranded three of my astronauts in orbit, I decided I should go and rescue them using this magnificent vessel. It has an upper stage designed specifically for the purpose of rendezvousing with the stranded capsule and bringing the pilots home safely. After setting up for the final rendezvous, the stage you see here has three RCS tanks, RCS thrusters, advanced SAS, but most importantly, a ring of eight landing legs that fold out like this. Now the idea being, of course, that these legs will form a nice basket into which the rescued capsule will fit. There is no regular engines on this, this is entirely driven by RCS. The plan of attack is we get in front of the capsule in its orbit and then we shall reverse onto it and once we've got it in the pocket we're going to decelerate along the, the orbit to slow everything down and hopefully put the capsule back on a return trajectory where its parachute can bring it home. So yep, its final rendezvous is basically a lot of very precise RCS maneuvering. Um, this one is a little easier to maneuver because I added the advanced SAS, which means that it doesn't pick up spin artificially, which uh, is going to be very important since we absolutely have to maintain attitude. However, the tanks, the SAS, and the landing gear add a whole lot of mass to this thing. And with only three thrusters on it, it's very, very slow to change direction. So you basically have to spend a lot, be very, very patient. Also, because we have to be patient, because this takes a long time, the rotation of the planet underneath us um, means that our reference axis is changing slowly as well. So we periodically have to disengage the SAS and realign ourselves with the rotation of the planet. However, the nice thing is that we've got this all lined up so the, the keys are translating nicely in my head and uh, it's just a case of making sure that I don't hit it too hard because it would really be terrible to kill them instead of rescuing them. You can see from the purple reticule the distance to the target and uh, I'm approaching at about one meter per second. Once I get closer, I'll probably slow down just a little, but uh, this is a good speed. We don't want to overdo this. Uh, unfortunately, the game randomly decides at some point when you're in visual range that uh, it doesn't want to put up the reticule for you and uh, I ended up losing it and having to relocate it visually. Uh, I, I don't know, I wish there was a way to lock that on sometimes. It was easier to find the, the full ship visually, but a, a single capsule actually looks a lot like a star, especially at the lousy low resolution I run this game at so that I can record the video for you, everyone. One of these days, I should probably update my computer. It uh, dates from 2005. It was the fastest thing you could buy in 2005, but uh, nowadays saying you have three gigabytes of memory uh, is not exactly impressive. So yeah, basically flying blind now, uh, just trying to turn the camera so I can get some parallax, some estimate. Uh, good news is I can actually resolve the shape of the capsule now. Uh, I can actually see it kind of spinning very, very slowly. So yeah, it looks like it's lined up and I'm just going to kind of keep adjusting it and I'm moving towards it very slowly. Um, hopefully slow enough that this won't be an issue. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to try and keep it in that position so that it, it lands nicely. Oh my god, it must be like 10 meters. No, not maybe 30 meters or so. Something weird happened with the, the recording, but um, yeah, this, this <laughs> is very hard work. A hot, hot, 172 kilometers, 977 meters, and we're almost there you can see it just coming in very slowly so again just trying to keep it centralized in there um, we're just forgetting about the rotation we, we're obviously pitching up just a little as the planet rotates around oh my goodness this is uh, getting inches and inches away the people in the capsule must be starting to feel a great deal of hope that they'll be rescued and they'll finally be able to use a bathroom that isn't in zero g and oh, this was beautiful. It landed like right on its bottom. So now I start to use the reverse thrusters and it sits there nicely. I mean, <laughs> you can't say fairer than that. So now I'm just going to basically hold these thrusters. We're now, we're pointing. 
you know, we are pointing along our orbit but because we're using retro thrusters, we're going to be slowing down our orbit. You see that our orbital velocity is slowing by about a tenth of a meter per second per second. So uh, this is going to take a few minutes to get down to suborbital, you know, in, down enough velocity so that we actually end up inside the atmosphere. Uh, this could be bo boring, but yeah, you know, we have rescued these dudes. This is a successful mission. We, I'm sure I have more than enough fuel. Um, so uh, the, the other target, or sorry, the other capsule, its parachute is intact, so it'll be able to land safely. And I'm pitching up a little. I, I think I'm going to try pitching this down in a, in a moment. Yeah, we're down to, our periapse is down to 134 kilometers. Um, we are not thrusting in the most efficient way. Uh, so let's turn off the SAS and see if I can uh, get it firing a little more along the axis. Um, one of the other things the SAS helps with is that because the capsule doesn't sit exactly in the basket, um, the whole thing wants to rotate when you thrust. So having the, the SAS there helps keep that from happening. Uh, because, you know, if, if you pick up any spin, you're going to lose that capsule and, and have to go and re-rendezvous with it. So, you know, you don't want to waste precious fuel. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of uh, mass the whole thing adds, but it does add a lot of convenience. I, I'm honestly, I was really impressed by how uh, neatly this thing ended up in here. So yeah. Um, you can see that we're actually descending now. We've dropped our, our orbital velocity below 2.1 kilometers per second. And uh, our periapse is now below 100 kilometers. So uh, we have maybe one and a half tanks of RCS fuel left. This is not going to be a problem. Yet yeah, getting lined up a little more, no problem. This is looking really boring, I can tell you now. But, uh, you know, this is a... This is probably pretty exciting. If you were stranded in a space capsule, you would be quite happy to be bored. So yeah, we're shifting off a little. We've dropped our, our shatter velocity down to two, 2,075 meters per second. Again, this is very slow. Look at that. Look at that sitting in there. Is that not wonderful? That is a sight to behold. Oh, look. So we're now, our periapse is below 70 kilometers. And that means that regardless of what happens now, this capsule will return because it'll aero break down and get there. But I'm going to get it down below 35. And then uh, once I get it down there, there's something else I want to do. I don't want to have uh, both things re-entering at the same time too close to each other because switching control between both entities uh, you know, is not something I want to be doing rapidly. So I, I want them to both enter at separate times. So let me see, what are we doing? Yeah, we're down to 47 kilometers. We're, we're getting there. We're almost there. Um, I guess we're not going to land anywhere near the space center. But uh, that's cool. You know, we will uh, take being on Earth over being stuck in space. I hear that they're... Uh, the last meal they had before they went into space had a lot of uh, beans and, uh, you know, the the capsule's starting to smell quite a bit. There we go, 32 kilometers. So that is this. This mission is a success. These people can return home. And uh, in a moment, I shall reverse the thrust and I shall leave them behind. That's us leaving them behind. They are now on a ballistic return trajectory, which will take them safely home to their families and to the planet they love. Now this one, we're gonna accelerate back up to orbital speed and leave these guys behind. And there's certainly more than enough fuel to do that. So now we have the rescue vehicle back in a stable orbit. We can stow the capture mechanism and now change controls to the uh, re-entering capsule so that we can land it safely. And of course, the way you switch control is you go to the map screen, you locate the object you want to control, and then you double click on it. And indeed, there I am in control of Jedwell, Kelnard, and Ronbin on their triumphant return to Kurth. Now it literally is a case of passing time and then firing the parachute when we get low enough. And then of course, editing and narrating a video about the whole thing. Well, I hope you guys like that because it really was quite a lot of effort for this. But uh, yeah, I am quite happy myself to have achieved this since I thought it was going to be way harder than it actually was. 
I mean, again, it really just comes down to being very patient in the approach. Anyway, leave us a comment if you like it. Uh, see you around sometime. Fly safe.